Well, it's getting worse. Uh, in uh, October, it was still the supply bottlenecks that were the main problem. Now um, we have these COVID outbreaks. Uh, we clearly see in the numbers that the COVID outbreaks now play an important role. The uh, ex expectations in particular in services have declined. Uh, in uh, tourism and hospitality, they've really plummeted. So companies are now very worried that this will be a difficult winter. Uh, uh, the overall picture is that uh, all sectors are suffering. We also see supply bottlenecks very strongly now in retail. And uh, moving towards Christmas, that's uh, bad news as well. So the overall picture is rather gloomy. Clemens, the COVID situation is one of rising cases. That's typically what the market also looks at. But the other element here is how a government may respond. And we've seen zero tolerance in some parts of the world. And that has even stronger impact on the economy, the market perception. We are hearing reports that the coalition deal has been formed and we're waiting for it to be presented later on today. What do you think the relevance is here for German business also contending with the government response around COVID? Yes, indeed, uh, it is key how the government will respond. Uh, up to now, the government hasn't been responding at all because we are in this transition. Uh, I think a uh, key issue will be whether working with 2G, so keeping businesses open and hoping that people, uh, at least those who are vaccinated, will go to restaurants uh, and, and shops. Um, that may be a strategy that limits the economic damage. Uh, but in general, it's um, the problem is it's the infections that are putting a burden on the economy. Uh, lockdown measures, yes, may increase that, that burden. Uh, on the other hand, without lockdown measures, uh, it may be that the infection wave lasts longer. So it's not quite clear whether lockdown measures are the bad news for the economy. Still, compared to last winter, uh, when we didn't have the vaccinations, I think think the danger, the burden for the economy uh, is smaller now. So if we can work with 2G, at least um, two thirds of our Germans are vaccinated and um, uh, they, are, they can continue going to restaurants and uh, hotels and so on. Clemens, this is Annette here in Berlin. Um, I have a question on um, the coalition agreements. What we're hearing so far is that um, <clears throat> the new coalition, new government wants to exit coal, wants to exit gas at, uh, at by 2040 as well. So how concerned are you about energy security for Germany? And this is one of the key concerns. Uh, uh, and I think everybody is concerned about that. Now, uh, w according what, to what I've seen, there is a sentence in there, yes, we will shut down coal in 2030, provided energy security uh, is not put at risk. And uh, a lot will depend on whether that sentence shows up in the coalition agreement, um, committing unconditionally on exit from coal uh, would uh, put a question mark over energy security. And the trouble is for a lot of uh, industrial investment in Germany, uh, energy supply is really key, energy prices and secure energy supply. So here is a big challenge for the new coalition. And I would expect the coalition to be very aware of that. So uh, I guess there will not be a commitment towards unconditional exit from coal. Uh, that might not work. Uh, that brings me to my next question, the gas market and also the, the situation surrounding Nord Stream 2. Um, we're heading into winter and it's already very much strained. So do you think that will put even more pressure on the economy, on, on companies? It certainly will. So energy prices are rising uh, and that will put pressure on companies and of course also on private households, especially the more vulnerable households are under pressure. And I think it's likely that the government will have to do something about this, uh, in particular for the more vulnerable, for low income households. We will see whether the coalition agreement includes anything about that, but I wouldn't be surprised. So this is an, an additional risk very clearly for, for, for the winter. And this also raises questions about future energy security, of course. Let me circle back to the supply chain problems that you say are getting worse. So what we're hearing is that they are improving in other parts of the world. So what is the challenge for the incoming government to try and fix some of these bottlenecks? 
Well, it's, I think it's very difficult for the government to do much about the bottlenecks. Uh, some coordination can take place with other governments about port closures and things like that. But in the end, I think it's the companies themselves who need to fix it. What we see in the data is that the share of companies telling us we have supply bottlenecks is increasing rather than decreasing. And so far, I'm surprised. Uh, there is better news from from uh, other countries, but um, if there is, that's fine. Unfortunately, I think the government can do relatively little about that. It's it's more something for companies themselves to fix. Uh, Clemens, in, in the report as well today, you've spoken about uh, the potential for stagflation, uh, stagnation rather, in the fourth quarter. What does it do for some of the hawks that may be circling? in Germany around uh, monetary policy, which is expected to stay very easy for many, many months to come. Yeah, there are now these two contradictory aspects. On the one hand, uh, also in our data, we see an increase in the share of companies saying we will increase prices. So price pressures are clearly increasing. At the same time, there is this slowdown in the economy, which will tend uh, to uh, uh, prevent the ECB from tightening its policy. So it's a, it's a tricky situation. Uh, I think the uh, German debate will probably continue to lean towards the hawks despite the, the COVID problems, but a lot will depend on how the economy gets through the winter. We shouldn't forget the ECB is about the Eurozone as a whole, and the economic situation seems a little more stable in other parts of Europe. And that suggests um, the ECB may also think more intensively about tightening now.